You're listening to Superhero Stuff You Should Know. Woohoo! All right, everybody, welcome to uh, the first interview in Superhero Stuff You Should Know. Uh, I am Andrew. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, I just wanted to... uh, I am Andrew, the guy that knows too little about Batman and still learning. And uh, the guy that teaches us the stuff that we should know most of the time is... This is Ben, the man who knows too much about Batman. And... And this is Wolfie, the man who wishes he could be Batman on a day-to-day basis. (laughs) <laughs> that sums it up, yeah. And All three of us. <laughs> this week, we have our first interviewee, or should I say interviewees, under the new name, Superhero Stuff You Should Know. I mainly knew Alex, and I don't know the other two guys, but uh, let's... <laughs> 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 but anyway, I was wondering if you guys could introduce yourselves. It'd be great at quick. a party. They are from the Cryptid <laughs> Campfire Podcast. Can you take it away, Alex, real quick? Yeah, just introduce hello. yourself. Ooh, yes, hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Daikaiju, and uh, I am from the podcast Crypto Campfire, and I run it with these handsome fellows, uh, Eli mm-hmm. Watson and Stephen Myers. Hello. Yay. Nice. And uh, we, we kind of, what we do is we get together weekly, uh, we pick a cryptid, kind of do independent research, get together and kind of do freeform jazz style discussion of the said cryptid. And then uh, oh. once we kind of get a nice picture of it, we uh, put it in a cryptic call scene and we have a fight to the death with another cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, that's me and kind of cryptic campfire. And uh, Eli, if there's anything you'd like to kind of add. No, I mean, you covered all the bases, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Stefan, if there's anything you want to throw in about yourself. Um... Should I take a shot? Yeah, take two. Cool. <laughs> it's 2020, baby. We got a right, double go. or nothing. <laughs> okay, well, how how'd you guys uh how'd you guys meet? Like you just like walk up to one another and say, "Hey, you like chupacabras and shit or what?" <laughs> like how the fuck does that happen? Well, uh Eli, did you want to tell the story of it? Oh, sure. I mean, uh so Alex and I and Stefan, actually all of us on the podcast, worked at a movie theater at one point in time. And it was me and Alex, we were relegated to a position known as the alcohol compliance monitor. Mm-hmm. And that position was <laughs> almost pretty much self-explanatory. We were supposed to monitor alcohol compliance. And as you can imagine, at a movie theater, it's not terribly exciting. Um, <laughs> Everyone's pretty well behaved for the most yeah, part. Yeah. <laughs> so what the position actually ended up being was me and Alex talking to each other about weird shit and getting paid for it. So <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you know, I guess we thought we could, we could keep it going, you know. So I said to Alex one day, and I'll never forget, I asked him, hey, Alex, I, what do you think about starting a podcast? And he just kind of went, ha, and walked away. <laughs> and, and I just kind of thought, well, I guess that's that then. So, <laughs> and then he came back a couple days later. He's like, you know, I've been thinking about that podcast. I think it would be really good to start that. Nice. Yeah. And so, uh, but we decided it would be a good thing to not just have it be us two because, I mean, some of me and Alex's conversations got deep. They still get pretty deep. And it could be hard for, people who aren't as nerdy as we are to follow. So we decided to bring a third member in. Her name is Jasmine. She's not here today, but she's definitely with the campfire. Yeah, she's, she's one, of the, one of the main starters, but it is Sunday, so she's taking it off. It's the, day's, the, the Lord's Day. <laughs> I toileth not on the Sabbath. Um, <laughs> okay, so like... What's the initial, like, in your life? Like, did you watch, like, Mothman Prophecy and be like, that's my shit? Or, like, why why focus on why focus on this subject matter uh, other than anything else, you know? Like, what, what was it about this that gave you that spark? Oh, geez, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you the first time I ever saw 
the Patterson Gimlin film. That's the famous footage uh, of Bigfoot walking across, you know, kind of turns and looks at the camera. Mm -hmm. I, ca I couldn't tell you the first time I heard the word cryptid. It just feels like something I've always kind of known in my life. Yeah. And something that I've always Ooh. just like, like from a very early age. So I don't, I couldn't answer that question, man. All right. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of ingrained, at least in my, my interest for sure is, you know, growing up, I was always interested in monsters, uh, you know, aliens, anything that was kind of weird. You know, I remember having a book uh, that had a crystal skull on the cover and just like staring at it and just being like, this is, this is next level stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I've always kind of kind of been into it. So I think and then especially, you know, when we were at the theater talking, you know, it'd just be like, oh, man, you know, you know, you ever have deja vu, you know, you think about aliens and we we just we're like, oh, man, all all of our interest is just, you know, in the strange kind of is so is oh, there's so much to talk about that, you know, that's we're so drawn to it. <laughs> right. Uh, this is kind of like a, a a basic B question, but like, do you, what's your favorite cryptid? Uh, let's go. Let's go around the table. So, Alex, do you have one? Do you have one at all? Yeah, I mean, I always say my favorite cryptid is probably the Yeti. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because he's just because I I always you know picture this just giant you know gorilla monster that's in the Himalayas you know walking around as this ancient god kind of like you know Blizzard <laughs> from Primal Rage. <laughs> yeah. this, this nice ancient pool, gorilla god that has ancient you know ice powers and its howls you know loosen the souls of evil everywhere <laughs> so it's a force for good though since it yeah he's one of the of good guys evil. okay that's cool eli <laughs> um my favorite is the the og bigfoot man oh yeah mm. uh, yeah it's, <laughs> it's you ever gone yeah, oh sorry you ever gone squatching? I have not. No, I've been. Uh, I'm trying to though. Um, oh yeah. I was gonna try this year, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. I want to join you. That sounds like the chillest Bigfoot uh, excursion that there can be. Yeah. <laughs> what were you about to say, Wolfie? I was gonna say it's interesting how both Eli and Alex have like, in some ways, like the same cryptid, but in many ways, like they're so like on the opposite side of the. Uh, the spectrum is that something you guys kind of related on going in i mean i don't know uh <laughs> yeah i like mean ape-like cryptids <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean you, you can't go wrong because i mean like one of you know one of the movies that you know me and i were you know we both talk about a lot you know when we first start talking about was king kong mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. And just, just, you know, you can't, nothing beats a big gorilla, you know, <laughs> that's right. all I'm saying. <laughs> I know I wouldn't want to fight it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you fight other monsters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So well, I have one more question real quick on, on the scale of like lame to cool, where does Loch Ness monster reside? Uh, I guess Sorry, more the lame side. I don't know. For me, <laughs> it's more lame. It, it, it depends on, on who, on, you know, what what nessie you're talking about oh so, yeah there's okay the tourist, cool. there's the tourist nessie you know when you <laughs> see it's the cute uh, little you know, green shit. loch ness monster it's got bagpipes it's got little uh -huh. shrek ears on it you know that's that's the lame touristy one that you know they put on you know crap to sell at the books you know at the thrift stores right but then there's the other Le nessie the other loch ness monster that that's was spawned at the turn of the century by Black magic, black magic, Lord Alistair Crowley. Oh, they connected right. that shit. They connect okay. that whole uh, thing. That's amazing. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Yeah, he st <laughs> he stayed at an ancient manor off the site of Loch Ness monster of the Loch Ness actually, and for seven days and seven nights, people heard howls and comets flew over the air and shrieks of the damned. I've looked this up a little bit. He. He supposedly was trying to do some super long ritual, like several days, and it had like a hundred days of preparation or some shit. It was mm. the guy. It's the guy was exhausting. wild. <laughs> His guardian angel. Yeah. And I guess yeah. supposedly, in order to do that, you have to remain celibate and abstinent for like six months, mm. and summon all the twelve like dukes of hell. Oh shit! And Jeez. apparently, what wow. had happened was. 
um, he had summoned them and then was called away on business for the British government and wasn't able to fully complete the ritual, thus resulting in a bunch of paranormal activity going around uh, this house. And this house just, like, burned down pretty recently, like, probably, like, 2012. Mm-hmm. It burned down. But people were, like, seeing, like, all co- sorts of crazy stuff, like the devil and, like, Whoa. demons and stuff. It's pretty nuts. Yeah. Huh. So that Nessie huh. is, like, on the scale of awesome. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm glad I asked. I didn't mean for it to sound like a loaded question at all, but I'm glad it was, I asked. It was as loaded well, as Love's gun. <laughs> and well, Stefan, we didn't get the we didn't get the Stefan his favorite uh, cryptid. Ooh, mine would probably be the Tatzel worm in the Swiss Alps. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Can you like, explain to, of course, to the layman? Absolutely. It's um, it's a snake sort of being with a cat head. And it's got lizard arms and legs, and it's got like poison breath. And nice. It, yeah. It's a worm, you said. It's like a snake. Oh, a snake. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like All a, right. cat, it's a cat, cat snake. snake. Yeah, it's a cat snake. <laughs> yeah, just cat literally snake. exactly. If you look up any pictures or anything, it's got like straight up just lizard arms and legs, a little just a little snake body attached to it, and then an actual cat head. Nice. As the <laughs> head. <laughs> Has there ever been a cryptid that was thought to be a cryptid for a long time, and then they actually found the fucking animal? Uh, the coelacanth is one that I think is a... Uh... Well, I don't know about it's that, a... actually. I, I mean, I guess like that's because a, a coelacanth is a, a Lazarus taxon, which is an animal that was thought to be extinct, and then shows up again modern day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess if you want to get really technical with it, uh, you could say the gorilla. Because for years, I mean, people were hearing legends from tribes in Africa about these ape-like beings that would come down from the mountains and kidnap people and, you know, that were sighted and stuff. And then They they hid amongst the trees, you know. Yeah, and then Mm -hmm. no one thought that was real until like 1930. And then they were like, oh, shit, the gorilla's a thing. (laughs) Oh, yeah, you nice. guys see this huh. thing? It's this big giant monster. You know, and that just <laughs> kind of happened recently too. There's another, uh, I think, ape species. It's kind of uh, debated. It's called the, um, it's uh, the Billy ape. I think that's what it's called. Huh. And they they just like discovered it in like 2017, I think. Nice. But there's like debate whether or not it's like just a a subset of a chimp. A chimpanzee, or if it's a whole nother species entirely. Oh, nice. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Ben and Wolfie, let's finish out this conversation. Favorite cryptid? Do you have one? Oh, man. Uh, you go first, Ben. Let me think about this. <laughs> I was going to say the same to you. Uh, okay, I'll <laughs> okay. give you some time. Um, okay, I really we'll don't have some... a great answer, but I did yeah. really like Alex's, uh, the Yeti. Something about a snow ape is really cool, and it reminds me of the game Darkstalkers, actually, more than... Uh, uh, primal rage you ever play dark stalkers oh yeah with the the big uh big fat yeti guy you can stretch his arms out yeah man i love that character they need to bring that shit back that'd be incredible oh yeah it's the t- the ps5 is on the horizon bring dark stalkers back there's some yeah. talk about it and it, uh, look look at like street fighter 5 now like mm-hmm. graphics like that but better with like these monsters that'd be so cool dude you throw in a little bit of the Mortal Kombat uh, X-ray vision too, but not as grotesque, but more cartoony. It would have to be if it's in that franchise. But yeah, that yeah, that'd be fucking sweet, dude. Yeah, that'd be neat. <laughs> Did you guys ever think of an answer? Uh, uh, wow, there's I'm, I'm just there's a oh, lot. Yeah, uh, no, I just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot to, to choose from, but I I've always been kind of more of a. A vampire guy, which kind of fits because I'm the Batman guy. But uh, one of the early ones is a Greek one called the Vrykolakis, which was very creepy, but it looked like a zombie type of thing. And at any random moment, it could knock on the door. Uh, It supposedly knocked on the door, and if you answered it, then uh, it would kind of disappear for a while. And then when you woke up, it would be sitting right on your chest, looking right at you and and zapping zapping you, uh, all your energy and blood and shit. Uh, oh, I gotta supposedly. also say my my follow up answer. You reminded me, Ben, is uh, yeah. the Japanese kappa kappa. You oh, know what yeah. I'm talking about K 
K A P P A. Is that a similar type of creature? For some reason, you reminded me of that. It's not super similar, but it's like this. It's almost like a Japanese goblin type of care kind of like being, but like more like a turtle. Well, I guess it's not really an animal. It's more like a mythological creature, I guess you could say. Yeah, I guess mine they, is too. They but think still, it's they yeah. think it's real. Mm-hmm. Well, they it, traditionally it's like an elf. It's like that. Traditionally, they might have thought it was real to some extent, but mm-hmm. but uh, it, yeah, it has Wolfie. a body count attributed to it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It like come, uh, comes in through legend. the toilet or something, something like that, you know. And it's got the weird cup head with water in it. Yes, it's got like a monk head where it's like what do they call it, tonsure, where the like the top top part of your he- the head is like shaved looking as well. It's weird. Mm-hmm. He's bald. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baldy of, boy. Yeah, kappas mm-hmm. are cool. Ooh, that one with the zombie that knocks on your door and does the terrible knock knock joke and chokes you yeah. at the end pretty much yeah <laughs> that was cool i was Probably gonna say for, <laughs> nice. for if you like batman have you ever heard of the ahool no cool how do you spell that it's a it's a a h o o l h o o l okay and what does it do just, i don't think i've heard of it. big man-sized bat that swoops down and picks up small children and goats from villages oh damn Sounds like man oh, bat. A man yeah. bat. What? Yeah. Oh, Alex, right. <laughs> you're just making shit up. Segway, <laughs> segway. But uh, yes. Wolfie, you never had one. You never got a. You never got an answer. Um, I think just to give it its due here and say it out loud, I think back to that really great X Files episode where I had those like two Latino guys like crossing the border or something, and and by the end of the episode, it turns out that he was the chupacabra. <laughs> and and, <Nice. laughs> and up until that point, I don't think I'd ever heard of this this cryptid or this type of creature. And I was like, it's, it doesn't seem like it's a particularly interesting creature aside from the fact that it sucks goats. But the X-Files just did <laughs> such a compelling turn on this thing that we'll go with that for now. But the interest has been piqued. Indeed. Nice. So, All right. I guess segueing into the next part, uh, are you guys... Uh, outside of the interest in cryptids, have you guys? Uh, do you have interest in like comic book or superhero type stuff? Like what uh, I guess Superhouse or super stuff, super superhero stuff you should know has been doing. I mean, very broad. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I didn't really grow up reading comic books. I guess part of the reason why I'm into some weird stuff is because I grew up on like H.G. Wells and Jules Verne. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. I'm not like too well versed in comic book lore. Well, I, I would say uh, I, I love comics, um, but my my uh, my interest is is all over the place in terms of it because mm-hmm. uh, I I've read some Batman stuff, but mostly Frank Miller. Got and, it. Uh, and it's and it's good, but it, it paints a different picture of a uh, of Batman, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Very true. And I, I like, uh, but I like a lot of uh, more visual, like uh, Mobius, uh, like the that French art comic types. You oh know, yeah, the, the big visual yeah. sweeping panels, and like Jeff Darrow, who did stuff for the Matrix, and he has oh, more, yeah. like complex details. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I'm more visually drawn to like the art of the comics and sometimes the stories. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, and I obviously can keep up with all the movies and things that have come out within the last 20 years or so. But I haven't really been super into reading comics. I've read some of the graphic novels that are pretty popular, like Watchmen and V for Vendetta and uh, Sin City and what have you. Mm -hmm. But I've never gotten into, like, the individual issue kind of comics. I've read Mm -hmm. some here and there, like X-Men versus Fantastic Four, that kind of stuff. But nothing, nothing stable. You know, like got gotcha. like a, a regular habit. Yeah, but I, I only have it. space enough in my brain to hold one nerdy topic at a time. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. I can only keep up with so much Grant Morrison. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's a, that's I'm a whole a, podcast in itself. I'm a Grant Morrison <laughs> fan myself. That was Alex. You said that right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll be mentioning him a little bit in this episode, but uh, the nice. main reason. I asked. We we were sort of considering what type of different topics we could talk about with you guys. There are some 
sort of super villains who definitely qualify in terms of the cryptid stuff. But then uh, I considered another angle, considering that 2020 is the 80th anniversary of the number one super villain in the world, the Joker. So our topic for today is the Joker. And the big question of debate is, is the Joker supernatural? Uh, Jack Nicholson. Oh, uh, <laughs> Jack Nicholson that is supernatural, bro. You're right. <laughs> Still alive after all those years of drugs. <laughs> and kicked out of Lakers games for being too trashy looking. <laughs> Seriously. He was a werewolf one time. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. <laughs> But I, yeah, Literally <laughs> kicked out of A-list star because he looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's just the big question for today. So I guess I'll start with the super the st- superhero stuff you should know, guys. So starting with Andrew, would you consider the Joker to be a supernatural character? I generally don't. Uh, I, I think that the core of Batman is kind of more crime noir, and mm-hmm. then they tacked on which is perfectly fine. I like it, but they tacked on supernatural elements as time went on. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think the core the core cast and everything involving Batman is generally kind of uh, more more or less realistic. You okay. know what I mean? Gotcha. All right, yeah. Wolfie. Um, in a way, I kind of do. Uh, I think he's more a thread of a mythological kind of like origin as opposed to supernatural. But in terms of some questions I've asked you before um, about some of the ways that he behaves and how he always seems to be able to stand up to Batman, if whether or not he had some kind of like, uh, I don't know, something that made him near invulnerable or something. Right. Right. Okay, so you kind of do, kind of do, and kind of don't. Kind of, I see, like you know, the uh, the spirit of Loki and Mercury, or uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Hermes, yeah, Mercury or whatever. Hades. You know, like the the tricksters, the trickster god, the jester, the court jester. You know, there's right. something about the clown origins and stuff that I would consider possibly, yeah, mm-hmm. having to be preternatural. Mm, indeed, indeed. Uh, so the cryptid guys, let's go over to Alex. What do you think? In terms of what you guys, I know you guys aren't huge comic book fans, but I imagine you guys are familiar with the Joker. So, uh, what do you guys think of this? Uh, Jared Leto. Uh, <laughs> Definitely I mean, supernatural. <laughs> he does have a cult. <laughs> um, it's funny. I actually, uh, I like to think that maybe there's a supernatural element to the Joker. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess I, I, I had the theory. That kind of is like a fun, just uh, reimagining to where. Have you guys seen? There's this new toy line out, or somewhat new, where it's the DC heroes, but they're like He-Man type characters. Oh, that's that's cool. But I have not seen that. They're like, but they're like caveman He-Man characters too. So you have like hmm. Batman as like He-Man with like a you know like a club riding a saber tooth tiger, and the Joker is like a barbarian clown. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, interesting. And uh, and it's like like DC primal age or something, huh. but you, you figure maybe a, uh, a comet fell to, your, to fell to the earth containing some interdimensional being that was seen as a God that was a, you know, enjoyed torment and torturing people for its own fun. And it became like this cursed bloodline that, you know, has people have like grins and have white skin. And that's why there's so many different versions of the Joker. Cause it's a bloodline that's cursed. Ooh. Interesting. That's mm-hmm. interesting. That's and cool. the madness. Uh, yeah, and madness just makes their actions do different things, so that's why they're all over the place. Because, Are you, know, you Grant Morrison, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> Tying all the shit together like that. Uh, I gotta, I gotta do my dark, Stephen King Dark Tower universe somehow. Indeed. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I was hoping somebody had mentioned that. Yeah, but instead of the turtle, you have the totsil worm. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, on to Eli. Oh, dude, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say no, because I don't know. I I would think in terms of, like, supernatural villains for Batman, I would uh, – what's his name from Batman Begins? Ra- Ra's al Ghul? Ra's al Ghul, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. you know, because the whole reincarnation thing. 
It's a mm-hmm. very supernatural element. I just didn't see the Joker as being in the same kind of avenue as that. Right. Okay, that's fair. And then Stefan. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I can wax poetic like Alex over here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I Stop would have to gentleman. say... What did you say? I said you're a scholar and a gentleman, Stefan. Ah. Uh, <laughs> no, you. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever thought about that until right now, about the Joker being supernatural. So I'm probably just going to say no. Okay, that's fair. So right now, here's our current score. We got Andrew, Eli, and Stefan on the side of realism. And we got Wolfie and Alex on the side of supernatural, or at least open to the idea of supernatural. So what we're going to do is right here, after the break, we're going to come back and discuss the possible supernatural connections into the Joker, and we'll see if that changes any opinions by the end. Catch you after the break. Hey everybody, it's Andrew. I just wanted to tell you about our friend Israel's retro gaming shop, RetroCo. If you go to retro-ko.com, you'll be able to see all of his retro gaming goodies. If you wanted to get that Sega Saturn hidden gem from back in the day, or if you wanted to get the Famicom disc system that you never got as a kid, or any other type of retro game that you were into, or uh, import game, please go to RetroCo.com. That's Retro-KO.com. And if you use the Superhouse code Johnson's Ballsack, you'll be able to get a little bit of a discount at checkout. So please, once again, if you could just go to RetroCo.com, you can also go to Facebook.com slash RetroCo with no hyphen. That's R-E-T-R-O-K-O. You'll be able to find him on Facebook as well. If you were looking for that PlayStation import game that you never got, if you were looking for that Mega Drive game that you never got, or any other kind of retro game, any import game, it could even be European. Israel also curates bundles at RetroCo, and he'll curate that bundle just for you. So please, go check him out. If you put in the code Johnson's Ballsack at checkout, you'll receive a Superhouse discount. And we're back and continuing the discussion on whether or not Joker is part of the supernatural. So, before we go into the Joker himself, I thought we could take some time into history since we typically do that on this podcast as well as uh, um, the guys on Cryptic Campfire do that as well on theirs. So, we'd go back and see what are the origins to the trope that the Joker is part of. Not the supervillain trope, but the trope of evil clowns. Because we've been seeing this a lot in (laughs) different (laughs) literature. (laughs) Yes. Because obviously Joker's not the only clown villain. Where's Nibbles, Wolfie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, kids, it's your old pal, Nibbles. <laughs> Nibbles, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, see you later. <laughs> so, uh, any guesses in terms of where the first instance of an evil clown or a homicidal clown came from? Just throw them out there, anybody. It was 1912 when John Wayne Gacy was born, and then (laughs) 20 years after he would commit his first murder. (laughs) Okay, that's one guess. Anybody else? (laughs) Evil clowns? Yeah, evil clowns. In literature Uh, or in real life? They started in my dreams, dude. (laughs) Good answer. They, uh, Bad batch of they DMT. Came from outer space. <laughs> oh, dude. That's another good answer. Movie. <laughs> yeah, I watched that the other yeah. night. Oh, my God, get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's so roomy in here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the killer clown idea, where it originally came from, I was kind of surprised by it, but it actually came from noted author Edgar Allan Poe. Really? Oh, in shit. A, in a story I had never heard of until now called Hop Frog. And it's actually based off a real incident in 1393. So in 1393 Whoa. in Paris, uh, King Charles VI was performing a dance with maybe about five or six other members of nobility. Somebody came in and set the dancers on fire, burning them to death. <laughs> the king himself survived. Everything burns. But yeah, everything the whole everything burns mentality might have come from this, but that's a real life incident that happened in 1393. In 1849, Edgar Allan Poe obviously not only existed, but he came up with the story of Hop Frog that was inspired by that. 
saying that Hop Frog was a dwarf clown or a little person uh, clown who was sort of the jester uh, of the king, and he wanted revenge on the king for insulting him as well as uh, taking, I guess, his love interest, who's also a fellow little person named Trippetta, was a hostage of the king. So Whoa. as the jester, he... Uh, basically dressed up everybody for this big dance, and as part of the dance, he set the king and everyone else on fire so that he could kill them and make off with his uh, love interest, Trippetta. And that was the story for Hop Frog. So that first started in 1849, which is interesting yeah. considering that Edgar Allan Poe is also considered to be the the father or the godfather of the detective story or the mystery he's story. The king, the father of horror, was he not? And the father of and the father of horror as well. So he's the father of many different things. He was the father of the the killer clown and the father of the detective story, which is interesting considering that Batman's considered to be the world's greatest detective and Joker is considered to be the ultimate killer clown. So and together both. they formed the best horror movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly. <laughs> But that's that was originally where it all came from. Now the Joker himself technically existed before Batman, as we've kind of discussed in our episode. Is Batman a ripoff of the Shadow? But essentially, oh, the yeah. idea of a killer clown being a villain to a dark detective story started coming out in the 1930s, before Joker even existed, before Batman even existed. So there was a character named the Phantom Detective who fought a killer clown in 1936 in a story called The Circus Murders. It's notable, as I brought up in that episode, the Phantom Detective was often signaled by a big light in a lighthouse that would tell when there was trouble. <laughs> Very similar to a certain bad signal. Um, a year later, uh, in a story called, in a, in a pulp called The Whisperer, Theodore Tinsley wrote a story called The Grim Joker with the Joker being a mob boss with a white face. Uh, the Whisperer's mm. true identity was uh, Commissioner Gordon. Again, before there was a Commissioner Gordon in Batman. Uh, but that's where the name came from. <laughs> so creative. And, yes, very creative. <laughs> uh, and then 1939 is the big one because uh, there was a killer clown up against the pulp character, The Shadow, who is also known as the Knight of Darkness, who was by day a millionaire playboy and at night... <laughs> A guy who dressed up in black and also and a crime. crusader of capes. <laughs> yes, a crusader of capes, um, and he uh, went up against the Death's Harlequin. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the, the Alec Baldwin movie. Obviously, they did, they didn't adapt the Death Harlequin story because everyone would be like, "That's just like Batman and Joker." But technically, they showed up a year earlier uh, in Death Harlequin. Uh, but overall, there's there's sort of was something in that era of, hey, it's be cool to pair a killer clown character up against a dark detective vigilante type, but they didn't really quite nail it down until, of course, 1940, when Batman number one came out. The very first issue where Batman got his own title, not the first Batman story ever. Yeah, but that's the first kind of like the, the that's kind of like the threads I was talking about. Sorry to interrupt you, but that's kind of like those mythological threads, you know, like how they've gone from that era, possibly even before and where they are now. Mm hmm. It's like Odin and Loki or something. Yeah, no, totally. It's it, There's an interesting thing of something was in that era where people were getting similar ideas of either a Batman yeah. character or a Joker character, and it just so happens that we just landed on those two archetypes in that. But they weren't the first. They were kind of just the more evolved version, I guess you could say, mm -hmm. on those. So the Joker himself, there's already a dispute as well in terms of his own origin. Obviously, uh, the in the Oscars recently, when Joker, the Joaquin Phoenix movie, was up for Best uh, Adapted Screenplay, it credited Bob Kane, Jerry Robinson, and Bill Finger. However, there's a dispute among those three men at the time in terms of who came up with the Joker, as well as where did the Joker come from, Bob Kane, uh, who we've made fun of on this podcast for claiming <laughs> everything, uh, has claims that he created the Joker. Uh, Jerry Robinson, who was like his intern, came up with the original sketch of a Joker card that is commonly used in the comics and the cartoons now in terms of Joker's signature card. Uh, Bill Finger, who's sort of the unsung creator of Batman, was either supposedly inspired by um, a, an advertisement in Coney Island with somebody with a big smile, or uh, it was the like movie. a ride, right? It was some sort of like early, yeah. old timey roller coaster or something, right? Yeah, there's a, it was a big 
old timey roller coaster, and there's this round face with they still have the art of this. This is like a round face, these big eyes, and a huge smile, almost like a Cheshire cat smile. But according to Bill Finger's son, that may have been the inspiration for the Joker. Uh, but it seems like overall they do it with that the drawing of the Joker was them copying the look of German actor Conrad Veidt in the silent movie The Man Who Laughs from 1928. In that movie, uh, it's based off a Victor Hugo novel, but essentially he was a clown named Gwenplaine who, when he was young, as punishment for his father, his face was carved into a permanent smile. So he was always seen as smiling, even if he was sad on the on the inside, and people would criticize him for laughing when he wasn't really trying to laugh, which obviously was inspirational for the Todd Phillips Joker movie from last year. But again, there's sort of these weird connections. Not only do we have a lot of different versions of Joker pop up before he even showed up, but we also have different people claiming inspiration, claiming ownership over this character. So that just sets the tone in terms of history, of real life history. Mm-hmm. Now let's get into what actually happens in the comics. So Batman number one had two stories of the Joker. Uh, The first one was basically his debut, but the second one is where things get interesting. His hideout is revealed to be under a tombstone in the cemetery, almost like he's hiding out in a crypt. That's tight. Put that in the Batman. Yeah. (laughs) So the Joker's first hideout ever was in this. And uh, at the end of the story, when he's fighting Batman... He stabs himself and realizes he's accidentally killed himself and decides to laugh in his final moments before he dies. Wait, the first battle with Joker, he kills himself? He accidentally kills himself with the knife. (laughs) Obviously not quite the supervillain that (laughs) he would turn into later. (laughs) It's understandable then why he laughs, you know? He probably had a real (laughs) self-deprecating sense of humor. (laughs) Foiled again. So... What the hell happened then? Because obviously he's dead at the end of this. Well, editor, the DC editor at the time, named Whitney Ellsworth, said, no, this guy has potential. I think you should keep him alive. So they added in an extra panel at the end of that issue. He's back from the dead. Where the doctor is looking over him and he's just like, wait a minute, this man's still alive. And yeah, all in, right. that, in that panel, you see... Uh, the operating table where he's operating on the Joker and you see his his body is completely white. And that was the first instance of showing that, hey, it's not that he puts on makeup, his entire body is white like a corpse. That's a great oh, Joker shit. origin. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's a, that's a fucking movie. This is before <laughs> Ace Chemical and all that shit. This is, that's that's bullshit. Yeah, that was that's about 10 years before Yakety <laughs> this is 10 years before because at the time they did, they didn't really think about you origins have, or things like that like Batman's origin didn't show up for a few issues after he first appeared you have Batman opened my eyes shows up punches a clown and then that's it and next issue <laughs> <laughs> it's the 30s he's still and I awake don't give a fuck where's my 10 plus broad <laughs> so the joker we have Whitney Ellsworth to think in terms of uh joker being a recurring villain because at the time, it was, he was just going to be a one-off. He was just going to be this creepy character, and then that would be it. Uh, well, Whitney Ellsworth. Potential. Yeah, he saw, he saw the potential, and in a similar what way. Was that? Hmm? What did Alex just say? Oh, uh, wasted potential. Yeah, he's, oh, okay, he, saw, he saw that as wasted potential. Whitney Ellsworth is also the one we credit for being the one to tell the writers later on, hey, Batman shouldn't kill. Speaking I don't of, think by that'd the be way, this is a quick, yeah. quick side tangent, but if you watch the Max Fleischer... Uh, Superman cartoons it's it seems to be made before the idea of Lex Luthor even so yeah. it's like you have you have like you can see like the Superman in an age of comics where the idea of a super villain wasn't really around just quite yet and I'm sure mm-hmm. as soon as mm-hmm. I mean you especially in the later episodes you can see World War Two is about to ramp up and there's a lot of like <laughs> anti-Japanese sentiment and some other <laughs> things oh man it's right. ridiculous <laughs> anyway <laughs> But um, but yeah, maybe the idea of the supervillain came maybe after Hitler. Who the fuck knows? Uh, or it would have been natural anyway. Well, without him, I don't know. There were threads of it in the shadow before Batman. Remember, because there were okay, certain right, right, right. There were certain villains. Just to recap, remember there was the guy called the Face. Oh yeah, that's right. That's who right. had his face didn't match the other side, and that was supposedly the inspiration for Two Face. And then there was another guy with fear toxin before Scarecrow oh, right. showed up. Yeah. So. Oh my God. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> They took a lot from the pulps at the time. But anyway, 
the Joker, okay, so he accidentally stabs himself. He's still alive. He's got permanent white skin, whatever. He's just a pale dude who made a mistake, but maybe he didn't, you know, accidentally stab himself in the heart or something. He nicked something, but he he's he'll survive, right? Mm-hmm. He became Good. he became Jack Nicholson, right? <laughs> and it becomes Jack Nicholson. <laughs> At like the 50 Knicks years game. later. <laughs> or the Lakers game. <laughs> Get your hands off of me. Shoving you know eyes in your mouth. I'm the Joker. I'm the Joker. <laughs> That's a Joker origin movie. Let go of my beer. They kicked him out of Laker game. Then he made them all pay. He, he took my beers. He, he can't do that. Get him back. <laughs> he stole my beers. So, uh, his next appearance was Batman number two, where he fights not only Batman and Robin, but also Catwoman at the time, before she was even called Catwoman. She was just called the Cat. But at the end, Catwoman huh. escapes, and the building that they're fighting in is on fire, and Batman and Robin have no choice but to leave Joker for dead in the burning building. So, maybe he's dead, or maybe he escaped. He probably escaped, considering the fact that he showed up again in the next time in Detective Comics number 45, he shows up and does more crimes as usual, yada, 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 but the main interesting thing is at the end he gets kicked off a boat by Batman and presumably drowns. But of course, he doesn't drown because he shows up again in Batman number 4 where (laughs) he has a hideout that's supposed to be, quote-unquote, a haunted house. This is his next hideout, was uh, living out in a house that he was trying to make other people think was haunted. Uh, He, Batman and Robin, have a confrontation there, and he falls into a trap door, presumably dead again. So, just you guys get the idea, I'll just sum it up. Like, every single issue of the original Joker ends with his supposed death, but then he keeps coming back. So... Oh my god. When the fuck does Ace Chemical show up in the 80s? Like, when 1950. 1950. We're past that. (laughs) <laughs> okay. We're not past that yet. This is all in like 1940, 1942 era. I'm this sorry. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but you could still say like, hey, maybe he like left a dying burning building. Okay, he escaped. Kicked off a boat. Okay, he swam away. Falls down trap door. Bleh, he, it was his hideout, so he probably there got was, away there out. There right? pillows under there. Yeah, there's pillows. He was protected. <laughs> things if you think start... about it, yeah. even in the movies, like he always seems to die and then you know somebody else takes his place so to speak mm-hmm. another actor da, 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 yeah it fits with the that the true origin of the joker not this acme chemicals yabba do <laughs> i'm talking Tunes, about yeah. looney tunes I'm bullshit talking about that you know cursed bloodline joker that's yeah. some za- Ooh. <laughs> yes tastes good so let's continue this uh for so just to summon up Batman number five, he falls off a clock tower into a water. Okay, maybe survivable. Batman number seven, he gets punched off the top of a train and off of a cliff. We're getting a little less survivable here. Um, he wasn't actually thrown in jail at the end of an issue until Batman number eight, which is like, you know, after so many different times. But Batman number 12, he and Batman are fighting on the top of a, of a dirigible, which is basically the blimp-like... Um, vehicle in the air and Batman punches him off that now maybe he also falls in the water there but still like he he has this whole recurring thing but the biggest instance of this is Detective Comics number 64 where the Joker actually turns himself in and Arkham Asylum wasn't around at the time this was still 1940s so this wasn't the whole like oh he's insane let's throw him in Arkham where he can escape again and be in more Batman adventures this was oh uh you're getting the electric chair and we actually see Joker get into the electric chair and get electrocuted and die in that what? issue. Uh, they straight up kill him. They straight and then up he kill wakes him. up as Jack Nicholson. And he wakes up <laughs> as Jack Nicholson, exactly. Who has my keys? You've, you've reached level two. <laughs> <laughs> Give me he does. The <laughs> Wendy. All right, so only for his henchmen <laughs> to show up and they take his he body out. He saw it on the television. And he, they <laughs> inject him with a serum. That they have no explanation for. They inject the supposedly dead Joker with serum, and he wakes up, and he's back. So this is Joker's first on-screen or on-panel resurrection in 1942, establishing that somehow he's able to die but come back to life in yeah, some way. Boy. No explanation for the serum. No explanation on whether he. Reanimator. Yeah. If yeah, yeah. It's, it's like reanimated. We don't know. Doctor he... Is Doctor Re- Jeffrey Coombs? Wait, what's his Combs. name? Combs. Yeah, Jeffrey West. Combs. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Herbert is West. Is Herbert and... West a cryptid? A cryptid <laughs> no. maker? No. Uh, that's a bridery animator, and he makes all the little baby uh, yeah. zombies that run around. 
then they start That's tearing the place apart. And then, I and never then, saw Bride. It's oh, good. Man. I like it. It's great. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Mm. It, it's it's definitely it, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, I'll check yeah. it out. Because the second one kind of there's like okay, this is a sequel to Reanimator. It's fun, but then the third one is like, oh, this is a good movie. <laughs> I still need to check those out. Oh, I will. I'm just too busy. Re- Reanimator <laughs> comics. Reanimator is fun. I've I've seen the yeah. first one. I'll check it out. Uh, Jeffrey Combs, also the voice of the Scarecrow in the yes. cartoons. Shit. Ooh. Yep. It all so. Ties. Yeah, it is. See, there's a perfect crossover for us. But oh, 1942, man. no explanation for the serum. He's just able to die and come back again. And they never really, nobody else has really revisited the story. I'm sure Grant Morrison is like the only writer still working right now who has read this in some way because he's always about everything is canon in the Batman universe and has some explanation for this. But uh, we would see <laughs> continuations of this throughout. So in The Sign of the Joker, he gets struck by lightning, falls off a building. In uh, this other one called Dreadful Birthday, Dear Joker, he's in a boat that explodes in a death in the family after he kills Robin, the Jason Todd Robin. Uh, he gets accidentally shot by one of his henchmen, and Batman leaves him for dead in a helicopter that explodes. But, of course, he still comes back. Um, and then we saw this in a bunch of animated series episodes. Some of the episodes ended with the Mark Hamill Joker uh, supposedly dying, but then coming back. At the end of Laughing Fish, he's supposedly eaten by a shark. At the end of Mad Love, he falls into a chimney, but he still manages to leave a note for Harley Quinn in the Arkham, uh, in her Arkham cell. In the world's finest crossover with Superman, he gets blown up in a plane, and Harley's all mourning, and she's like, Puddin! And Batman's like, he is now. Uh, and Wait, then, is, <laughs> is Croc a cryptid? Yeah, he eh? would be considered, yeah. 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 If we do another yeah. episode, we can, we can do that crossover, but I wanted to start big with this one. Uh, and then... The Batman Beyond Return of the Joker was, as Wolfie and Andrew and I saw, one where he was supposedly killed by Tim Drake's Robin, but of course found a way to come back. So in uh, general, there's this been this, good yeah, this subtext of immortality that's been sort of following him throughout. So that's kind of just one of the ways. But do you guys feel after hearing this that is he immortal or do you think he's just a human dude who gets off lucky a lot of the times? Uh, I think that the kids loved seeing that clown on them pages, and they, <laughs> the company just kept rewriting his ass back in. <laughs> so Andrew's going to keep being the skeptical one, being like, nah, he's still realistic. <laughs> this is all because of DC Comics making money. All right, Wolfie? Well, now that you say all that, it make, you know the immortality aspect of it, I'm like... You know, it's akin to the powers of a god of some kind. Right. And again, I come back to like Loki or uh, Hermes or Hades. You know what I mean? Like these. I don't know if that's kind of the similar character, but that's not at all. Uh, Hermes. Maybe the James Woods version. And L- Loki. <laughs> um, but you have and like the Pennywise. You know what I mean? You have this mm-hmm. like thread of a of an immortal evil clown reaching its way, arching, arcing its way through popular mythologies uh, mm-hmm. to stay alive, you know, to exist. And in that way, I see it right. kind of being like supernatural. Uh, I just got the chills. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, uh, that was the AC. My bad. That's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alex, does this fit into your sort of ideas of the, cause you had your own theory about the mm-hmm. sort of tainted bloodline. Yeah, I, I this Joker, he sounds awesome. This uh Yeah. Especially the whole, you know, his first appearance, they're like, Oh, he, he's got a, a you know, a secret base under a tombstone, you know, and oh, and, and then it's under a haunted house, you know, and um and he's he, you know, he's like a zombie guy and he's like kinda of macabre and I'm like, Oh, it sounds like this would be a good Vincent Price kind of horror oh, I villain. Love that shit. Just, they wasted Vincent yes, Price on the Batman, egghead. Yes. Ah, 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 ah. And like he just like he, like he lives in like the uh, the Adams family house, you know, when he pulls the <laughs> chandelier and like a dragon head <laughs> pops out, but it has Man. like face paint on it and it breathes fire. And does Warner Brothers know about you? <laughs> <laughs> they have me locked up. They have me locked behind the King Kong gates. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best of times. It was the blurst of times. <laughs> <It's> got here. <laughs> All right, Eli. Yeah, bro. So there's that theory that you know our universe is a matrix. 
<laughs> so that's what the DC universe is. Yeah, and yeah, the governors of it are the people who write the comics. So, you know, <laughs> the Joker is one singular being going through this universe, you know, living his life in this matrix, but he's subjected to the will of his overlords. And so if they tell him, come back alive, he has to come back alive. Mm-hmm. That's dope. <laughs> He, he has no stuck in a Philip K. Philip K. Dick nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking awesome! Come I just on, want to die. <laughs> You're gonna do just another version of a Batman, smiling gangster. Me, please, I, I want you to kill me. Break your one rule, and the Matrix will finally end. Oh yeah, shit. there is a theory that he's able to tell that he's a comic book character. Oh, what? Wow. That's yeah, cool. that's because he sometimes breaks the fourth wall, and in oh, certain yeah. comics. Uh, in like the Laughing Fish or Sign wow. of the Joker comic, he's like he has a whole scene where it seems like he's monologuing, but he's also looking right at the the reader the whole time and addressing the reader, and then he turns huh. the page again. This is years before Deadpool. Nice, huh. I like that. Grant That's Morrison does cool. that kind of shit. Yeah, uh, and then Stefan. Is there is there a scenario where Joker meets uh, Keanu Reeves's Neo? <laughs> there could be. We can't rule that out. I mean, I'm yeah. all for it. Ooh. Agent Smith wasn't very awful. funny, though. I mean, I guess he was kind of funny in his own way. Can you imagine very if restrained. the Joker was like a Dr. Manhattan type where he's just like omnipresent and aware of everything mm-hmm. at all times? <laughs> that would be awesome, actually. It would be, yeah. Everything's funny. I, I am once again sick and tired of people's sense of humor. I'm above it all. I find myself <laughs> alone. <Just> <laughs> <stars>. <laughs> <laughs> if there are if there truly is an infinite amount of universes as astrophysics physicists like to tell us then perhaps in one of those infinite universes every single one of these comic book <laughs> stories is actually I mean, fully happens. real <laughs> yeah we're just peering into the windows of each one of those the the outlets for these things is a window panel mm-hmm. screen what that's the, the fuck? that's the Grant Morrison idea and the whole DC multiversity. They kind of left that idea after rebirth. I don't know what the fuck happened, but anyway, right? Like we're through um, the looking glass here. The the real world that we are in is one of the Earths in one universe, and then all of the other comic book stories. I guess they're trying to posit like could potentially, and this is true science. If if true, well, true theory anyway. Mm-hmm. If if there really are an infinite amount of universes where the universe truly is infinitely possible, then uh, one of them probably we could assume has all of these events actually happening in that universe. And so, comic books, in some sense, literally are a peek into another universe. It's a huge stretch, but I love thinking about that. Right. I so feel that when I play video <laughs> games and I'm like really stoned. I'm just like, I, I feel like I have a responsibility not to just run around and cap people, you know, indiscriminately every now and again. But, but you know, they have those universe. little, they have those little morality ticks now. And so it's like, oh, where do you lie? Mm-hmm. If you, uh, if you, if you kill that line of code, that code will end, bro. Yeah, right? And then I'm like, I really feel for John Marston. You know, I really feel like, you know, through him, I'm experiencing life in the Old West. <laughs> yeah. John Marston, R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah, those I'm are my just dudes. asking for a little goddamn faith. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so far we've got... Uh, Immortality, potential immortality, but we actually have a few other things that have been hinted at throughout the years that have nothing to do with that so much. So some of it is the idea that he may be resistant to pain. Uh, in the new 52, the Joker cuts off his own face uh, as a gift to the doll maker, and then uh, later on staples it back onto his face throughout the death of the family arc. Um, there have right. been times where he's been shot or nearly beaten to death by Batman. Gordon, Commissioner Gordon, has flat out shot him in the knee. And I yet like he's the. Still... I, sorry, Ben, to cut you off there. I, I do ahead. like yeah. this idea of uh, the Joker being uh, like not being able to feel pain and maybe lots of other things as well, lots of other mm-hmm. emotions making him cold, right. and thus being sort of the catalyst sending him into madness or sending him into, uh, you know, kind of like that cold sociopath kind of 
kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And where are you the, at, Todd Phillips? The humor, Rod <laughs> Phillips. Where the are you humor at, buddy? Is I obviously covering <laughs> up? He's trying to have an emotion. Right, right. You know I mean, that's I mean? why a lot yeah. of scenes where Batman's beating him, he's never like actually reacting to the pain. He's always laughing. Yeah, and right. with all that, with all that evidence that you presented, it's kind of ramping those ideas up. By mm-hmm. doing this, like they are kind of acknowledging to without saying it outright that yeah, this motherfucker could take a punch. Yeah, I mean, and then as I said, Gordon flat out shoots him in the knee, and Joker even makes a joke about Gordon's daughter because Joker crippled Gordon's daughter. Uh, but he, unlike Gordon's daughter, uh, he is able to run and walk in the next few. Like they never carried over any of the injuries that Joker's ever sustained over his entire mm-hmm. eighty years, as opposed to other characters where they might. Uh, sustain something and you'll see it in the next issue he's uh, got the Wolverine healing factor bro he's got something uh, so there's that <laughs> or possibility just he's, or just he's all stitched up and shit under all those suits <laughs> he's probably all fucked up that's that's why he's wearing fake that. nose <laughs> he probably takes it out and it's just like a cavernous dried up old ash stain he's, he's oh. like that so he's got uh, this Nazi big protruding yeah <laughs> oh yeah that's like true a Cronin Nazi yeah, yeah, that guy was cool. It's all dust and bugs. Ooh, Along they should the- have uh, <laughs> Doug Jones play Joker. Yes, Ooh. dude, that'd be and, and, the- and pale makeup and black lipstick and like, black hair. Like, all sinewy, <laughs> and he walks all kind of weird, and mm-hmm. his teeth fall yeah. out every so often, and he has to put them back and in. And he cuts people. That'd be cool. That'd be cooler than how giving him a grill, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, just yeah. Doug Jones, but with the Jared Leto uh, face tattoo still on the design. <laughs> yeah, what dimension was that? What the fuck? Oh, dude, let's never go there. Ooh, I think somebody, yeah, somebody, place. there was a joke. It was The Onion or somebody when the Joaquin movie came out. There was just like, how are audiences supposed to know that Joker's damaged if he doesn't have it tattooed on his forehead? <laughs> <laughs> how, how are they know, supposed to know? If he doesn't have a smile on his palm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, bro. It was in place of any sense of humor. Uh, there's also ideas of him being immune to everything that other villains try to throw at him. So uh, there was a crossover issue of Captain America, actually, called, uh, well, basically Captain America and Batman, but he and the Red Skull were trying to team up together. Joker apparently didn't like the fact that Red Skull was a Nazi, funny enough, so uh, Red wow. Skull and Joker tried to gas each other and found them both to be immune to the other's uh, deadly gas. Now, obviously, that's for writing purposes. That's obviously to the case where you can't have the villains kill each other off before the heroes even fight them. But in Wait. the night... Sorry, go ahead. What, what were the gases? Uh, what well, was uh, the Red, Red Skull, Skull trying to make him a Nazi and the Joker was trying to make the Red Skull laugh? Pretty much. Uh, I mean, I think the Red, Red, the Red Skulls... And they're I both smiling! The Red Skulls It gas, is the Matrix! <laughs> I think the Red Skulls gas was supposed to just kill him, uh, actually. But the, the, the Joker was definitely trying to give him the Joker Venom stuff that, that causes them to, to laugh themselves to death and die with a smile on their face. But Red Skull apparently is immune to that, and Joker is apparently immune to whatever stuff that Red Skull had concocted in, yeah, in the 1940s. Uh, in the Nightfall storyline, Joker tries to team up with Scarecrow, who tries to betray him, and Scarecrow douses Joker in fear toxin. And Joker screams for like two seconds and then says, gotcha, to Scarecrow, revealing that he's actually immune to the fear toxin when no one else in the entire DC universe is. Uh, <laughs> so it's it's sort of hinted at by Grant Morrison that Joker's immunity comes from uh, years, quote-unquote, developed over years of dedicated abuse. So it could be <laughs> right. because of that, or it could be other reasons. Grant Morrison in that same storyline has, uh, he spotlights a mosquito trying to drink uh, uh, from the Joker. And then, quote unquote, blind and crippled, the mosquito spins in circles on the radiant floor, choking on tainted blood, and then dies. Tainted from Joker's blood. blood. Yes. Nice. And then, of course, this idea of Joker's blood being tainted with something is got carried over into the Arkham City, Arkham Knight video games of trying to infect people through his blood, including Batman, who's already infected. Uh, but that's that's another aspect of it. There's also another idea of him having this ability to move wherever he wants, wherever he needs to go. It's only been hinted in a couple comics, but it makes sense. So the common trope is a Joker does a crime, Batman beats the shit out of him and then throws him into Arkham Asylum and then he escapes and then rinse and repeat. 
However, in a storyline called Justice, Joker tells Riddler, quote, I can leave here whenever I want. I only stay here for as long as I think it's funny. So he somehow ha- he's hinting at the fact that he could. That's how I felt in school. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But it's he's hinting at, at the, the the idea that he can just move through the walls, or he always has some sort of escape route out of there. Uh, there's the other storyline. I would death. view that as like, I mean, I know I'm like the resident skeptic here yes. on this episode, but like the way I would see them, the way they would write that is that they would. Uh, the Joker would just fucking trick people. He would be able to fucking um, tempt people to deceive uh, something along those lines to, to get to get out. Like it's it's like a it's like Loki or Satan in that in that mm-hmm. sense. Like you're all he's just got a fucking forked tongue. Potentially, potentially, it's, it's never really explored. He just tells that to Riddler, but we don't actually see him escape. I like that there are those holes about it too. Like it's mm-hmm. just palpable enough not to fully be an issue of. The comics where it's like, yeah, he's a zombie, magical, walks through walls mm-hmm. guy, but mm-hmm. that it just plays on the imagination just so, you know, mm-hmm. exactly. I think that's interesting. Uh, there was something that sort of built off of that idea in the storyline death of the family where Batman had stopped the Joker at one point and Joker fell into the water. Classic like golden age type thing where he punched the Joker, Joker fell in the water, couldn't find the body, used the Batpo to try to find the body. Couldn't find it, so he came back to the bat cave, rested. The next morning, he goes back to the cave, and next to the the bat boat is a Joker card in the water. And he says that the giant Joker card in the bat cave is actually a replica of that card and remembering that incident from years ago. So oh, wow. I'm going to. Uh, so there's no have... other reason that that card is giant. Just Batman had uh, it printed extra large. He's like, I really want a really extra large version of this thing. What the fucking what it's like, it's like fool me once, uh, fool me, tw- can't fool me again. <laughs> Big ass <laughs> card. <laughs> He's talking to it. Yes, Joker, I know. So people are. Is it from a giant universe? Maybe. Potentially. That's yeah. what I was. Thinking, I love that. Yeah. That's great. Yes. Because just he, somebody flinging he, a card at you is not going to hurt, but a big one? <laughs> <laughs> a he big one? He, he barely got away with his life <laughs> in that giant card that he broke out with. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Chow! Batman oh, dragging shit. it into the cave. <clears throat> where he just he just used it. He just used the Ant Man technology that Michael <laughs> Douglas created where he just shoots the thing and it just explodes into this giant version of it. Yeah, that's fun too. <laughs> Alfred, there are universes <laughs> out kidding. there full of giants shutting it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wolfie, down. <laughs> yeah, Wolfie, I'm gonna have Morgan you. Morgan like, this is wrong. This is wrong. <laughs> so, ba- basically, Batman's being questioned by the other members of the Batman family, so like Robin, Nightwing, and a river, because they're just like, well, maybe the explanation is that he just hung on to the boat and left the card there and swam away or something like that. And Batman says, first, the bat boat would have picked up the extra weight. Second, if he did somehow manage to evade the sensor he'd still have to make it through the tunnels, meaning he'd have to hang out onto the boat while it traveled almost five miles underwater at speeds of nearly 50 miles an hour. None of us could do that. Not me, not you. Third, if he made it in, there'd be traces of him, evidence from the sensors, from the alarms, there'd be a record. And yet there's nothing. So, thank Shit. you, Wolfie. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> thank you. So he he's able to just go into the Batcave somehow and leave the, the card almost as a hint to oh. Batman, basically telling him, like, hey, I know who you are, I know where you're at, but I want to continue this game. This kind of the he subtext. slides on that. in. Mm-hmm. So that's another instance, but... Okay, so here's... I'm going to present the biggest evidence coming up on it. Uh, tying back into Grant Morrison, who wrote Arkham Asylum, A Serious House and Serious Earth, he talked about the origins of, of Arkham, and in 1920, he, he occasionally has flashbacks to the first time Arkham Asylum was built by Dr. Ar- Amadeus Arkham. Uh, and while Amadeus Arkham is in his daughter's room, he's about to walk out when he sees something on the floor. And he says, oh, one of the workmen must have dropped it. And it's a Joker card. And it's sort of foreshadowing the eventual slaughter of Arkham's family in it. But also hints at the possibility of Joker having some kind of presence in 1920. Uh, and hmm. it's just a little hint of it, but that kind of ties into the possible theories that Alex 
came up with or the other ideas of maybe he's been around for a while. Uh, it wasn't until Scott, the writer Scott Snyder came up with a different explanation to this that really tried to give the most evidence of the idea that, hey, the Joker might not actually be human. So hmm. he wrote a story called Endgame before Avengers Endgame, but there were a lot of stories called in the comics called Endgame, but this is the Batman Endgame. And in it, Sonic uh, Adventures, yeah. in game, <laughs> Archie, in game. <laughs> I am Archie, and then he slips out his fingers. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, but in this one, Joker has unleashed. This is going to be very timely. A virus. <laughs> He's unleashed a virus. It's oh, a man. pandemic around Gotham, where he has Son turned of a bitch the Justice League into Jokerized versions of the Justice League. And Batman has to fight off the Justice League who are under the Joker's control. Uh, so he has to fight a Jokerized Superman uh, and nearly gets killed doing it. But he is able to defeat them and he has to stop this pandemic across Gotham. And uh, one of the Hey, main wait, points... I have a question. Yes. Sorry to Go interrupt. Ahead. Can Superman grow a beard? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, cool. Thanks. All right. Anyway... <laughs> He, he just thinking about that earlier. Very well. <laughs> Apologies. <without CGI. laughs> oh, yeah. he exactly. can grow a beard. <laughs> <laughs> they should have just given him a beard in that fucking movie. That'd be so much <laughs> anyway, easier. He's to always deal clean with. shaven, and you never you never see him with the five o'clock. At least I haven't. Anyway, he, sorry about that. He uses his uh, laser beam off the mirror to shave. That's cool. Yeah. Alex, has that been ever a comics? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> anyway, sorry to interrupt. No problem. Uh, so Gordon's the Superman looking... shit. <laughs> Doosh, right through How the fucking he... wall. Yeah, I know. How <laughs> does he not break the toilet? He has to shoot up into space. Boom. <laughs> but whatever Preview. planet that shit lands on, their dinosaurs are dead. <laughs> Preview for our Superman deep dives, everybody. <laughs> does... does he eat bugs? <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, shit. Gordon, Commissioner Gordon's helping Batman, and Batman has to go to this hospital called Gotham Presbyterian, which is known for being haunted due to these unexplained tragedies in the past. One of these things, as he's researching, is the fire of 1910, where nearly 50 patients, uh, over 50 patients have died in that fire, and quote unquote, the devil himself is said to have visited the halls of the Gotham Presbyterian Hospital. And Gordon's like, well, this is just all fantasy urban legend shit until he looks at a picture from 1910 and he looks closely in the background to see a pale man with a smile on his face that looks very much like the Joker. And then Gordon goes, <laughs> Gordon goes to 1946 <laughs> where there was another tragedy at that hospital where medicines were exchanged for rat poison. And guess who he finds in the background? And then he finds another newspaper and another... And there's instances throughout history of Gotham where Joker has been there, even before Gordon or what Bruce were born. And as he's Does doing he that... like Jack Nicholson? Yeah, in The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, this, you did bring him back, Jack Wait Nicholson, but you guess that's exactly movie. right. That's exactly right. It's a black and white photo, and you play some jazz in the background, and we zoom right in, and that's the end of the comic. Wait, what? That all no. works, man. <laughs> and, then, and then you have Batman climbing the stairs with a bat. He's like, get away from me. Get away. Yeah. yeah. So wait, now I have another really important question. Is Jack Nicholson a cryptid? <laughs> he might be. Yeah. Only when he shows Keith up. Keith Richards, like, for sure. He, we, we have a theory that he might be a shaved Bigfoot. <laughs> You're right. You're right. He and emanates then... the power. <laughs> They didn't want a five o'clock shadow Bigfoot standing in the front lines or whatever the fuck, the front row for Lakers games. <laughs> like, this is a human establishment. I'm sorry, Jack. You've got to go back <laughs> to the forest. <laughs> sorry, Harry. you got to get your Henderson out of here. Yeah, and the reason nice. they couldn't get him out is because they didn't have Bigfoot's greatest fear, John Lithgow. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. They're He's never in the same room. He was staring Bobby bullets Beast. at him from across the court. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> With that look he has, you know, you know, yeah, the glare. Dumb yeah. animal. <laughs> I think we cracked the code on this one, guys. I think so. Yeah. That so, guy has yeah. my keys. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's more to this comic than just the, the zoom in on the on the black and white photo. But uh, Gordon, <laughs> right. it'd be enough. Gordon <laughs> finds that Joker is hiding under his bed, literally, and Joker shows up, and Gordon shoots him in the chest. 
and Joker apparently dies in front of him. And Gordon calls Batman. He's like, I did it, Batman. I did it. And then as he's talking to Batman with his wait, back wait, turned. Let's, let's, let me put a pin in that real quick. We can just assume that Gordon stays strapped. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's got a gun Nothing. under the pillow. Close well, carry. He, no, he, well, he's in his bedroom that has a desk. So he's at the desk. It's not oh, like he's, okay. he's it's not like he's going to bed reading about hospitals dying in nineteen ten. I thought he and had this. I thought he had precious <laughs> under his pillow and just ready to fucking <laughs> get no, a he, whammo. In his bed. He had yeah, he had uh, he has his holster on, but yeah. yeah so he took yeah. he Beverly. He <laughs> oh Beverly. He tells Batman, I did it. Steel. I had to put him down, and as he's saying this behind him, Joker stands up again. And he infects Gordon with a virus. And laughs to Batman. Now, again, some of this is like, did he doctor it? Like, what the hell's going on here? And Batman goes to the expert on this, the consultant, who is the C-list supervillain Crazy Quilt. Now, I don't know why Crazy Scott Snyder... Crazy Quilt? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Scott Snyder redo him, though? Yeah, he did it in this in this story. So okay, Crazy gotcha, Quilt, in gotcha, this gotcha. version, is a mad scientist who uh, kind of knows or worked with Joker before and kind of knows what's going on. Crazy! Is a quilt, a <laughs> chemical compound that existed in nature long ago, something very rare, but present in certain places, something that could activate the right genes, the same ones we tinker with endlessly, that controls our bodies, repair themselves. I named it Batman. I called it Dionysium, a little scientist humor, see? After Dionysus, the Greek god associated with rebirth, hearts sewn into thighs. Very good, very good. <laughs> so Batman still wasn't really believing this in terms of like, okay, you guys came up with a compound or found a compound from long ago, but uh, Crazy Quilt has more to say about this. So People who encountered the chemical long ago and still walk among us here in Gotham. I've heard stories of a few. There's the savage who was among the oldest men alive. He encountered it in its rawest form. <laughs> and there's the man like a demon who keeps pools of the chemical in secret pits around the world. A corrupted ah. version, but effective in its own way. I see. And then finally, there's one more person that he says. And him, the link back to Gotham, the pale man, the one who laughs at us, who encountered it sometime before Gotham rose. So basically, he's saying that this substance called Dionysium is the reason why we have Vandal Savage, who's the immortal caveman villain who he's referring to with, quote unquote, the savage who was among us. That's my rap name from now on. (laughs) The Savage? Vandal, Vandal Savage, Savage. Baby. Back Vandal up. Savage, yeah. See you uh, on Sunset Boulevard, son. He's also saying that substance is what's in the Lazarus Pit, which is why Ra's al Ghul is immortal. But he's also oh. saying that's the reason why Joker is always coming back. He's been here this entire time. He's been part of Gotham, in the heart of Gotham, for centuries. And that's why every single time that he gets injured, he seems to heal. Every single time he dies, he comes back. Ace Chemicals makes sense, too, because it's like a pool of this shit, right? <laughs> it, could, it could be. It could actually essentially, be I mean, this. yeah, like, essentially, it could, it's some of this, ain't, this ancient chemical got into this pool. Like, I like I like it, you know? I like yeah. Scott Snyder, a smart guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> Wait, by the way, real quick, just for context, this is New 52 or Rebirth? This is New 52. New 52, right, yeah. yeah. Resurgence. Yeah. But it, it, ties, it feeds into this idea that actually ties very well into Alex's theory that this has been here for a long time or some substance has been here for a long time that has created a man who is able to do this. So Batman doesn't quite believe this. He even has to go to the Court of Owls for information. I knew you would like that, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, but he it's sort of kept ambiguous by the end whether this is actually true or if he's just messing with Batman by doctoring photos and Crazy Quilt was just crazy. Uh, Greg Capullo had this to say about uh, his opinion about the Joker. I like to leave the possibility open that what Joker is saying is true, but all signs point to he's lying is the idea. Ultimately, the reason he starts clawing his way toward the Dionysium at the end is because clearly it seems he needs to get more to heal and get out of there. 
All right, thank you. So, again, kept ambiguous in the end, but this still provides the most evidence because uh, Alfred's daughter, Julia, says that if these are doctored photos, it's the best doctoring she's ever seen. She's never, she can't see where the real authentic photo begins and where it ends if it's not actually authentic. So, again, like, we don't know. It's very much left in the air, but this provides the most evidence out of this. Um, and since this does tie into, I thought I might as well add, since Alex did have the idea of, you know, what if it's actually a lineage, a tainted bloodline? Mm. The idea of there being more than one Joker, not just one dude the entire time. So we've seen several instances of this in Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Strikes Again. Uh, the mantle of the Joker actually passed on to Dick Grayson, mm. who was like oh, this yeah, almost... Yeah. Yeah, this almost immortal type version of him who could shapeshift as well. So that was interesting. Uh, it's probably the most interesting thing in that entire in that entire <laughs> story arc. <laughs> um, you don't mean the fact that the Flash has been trapped for twenty years, keeping the electricity running for the entire world on a big giant. Uh, <laughs> you know, field. I forgot about that part actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, at Alex least he's doing didn't... something useful now. <laughs> There's, there's that, and uh, let's see, Grant Morrison created Damian Wayne as Robin and cre- and showed an alternate future where Damian Wayne becomes Batman. He calls it the Batman 666 universe, but in that universe, Joker has died, but his virus has continued on, infecting people and turning them into the Joker. And then, of course, in Arkham Knight, we saw the idea of, even though Joker was dead, his blood was tainting people or infecting people and turning them into people like him. We have an upcoming story arc called The Three Jokers, where it looks like it's the Golden Age Joker, the one with the haunted house and shit, uh, mixed with the death of the family Joker, who used the crowbar to kill Jason Todd, mixed with the killing joke Joker, as apparently three different characters. That has, comic has not come out yet, but we'll see. Uh, there has been, in terms of the movies, obviously, just in terms of real life scenarios, obviously the fact that we've gone from actor to actor, actor makes sense because this is a story that keeps getting, being re re envisioned. So I wouldn't necessarily add that to evidence. However, there's this sort of recurring thing that started coming up, starting with funny enough, Jared Leto, uh, in the extended cut of suicide squad, uh, in a, deleted, a scene that was deleted from the theatrical cut, cut, he actually tells Harley Quinn, quote, I am not someone who is loved. I'm an idea. State of mind. Uh, mm-hmm. In Gotham, they definitely played around with this. Uh, the Cameron Monaghan character of Jerome Valeska was supposedly killed in season two only for you to see, quote, unquote, his legacy of other people seeing him on the TV screens and being inspired to kill other people. Uh, he's eventually resurrected in season four, or I mean season three. Uh, in season four, uh, he tells yes. Gordon, I'm more than a man. I'm an idea, a philosophy, and I will live on in the shadows within Gotham's discontent. <sighs> You'll deceive me soon. Au revoir. <laughs> before he commits suicide. And then his twin brother, this is where things get hoping, his twin brother, also played by Cameron Monaghan, <laughs> ends up getting infected by uh, the serum type stuff that Jerome created, turning him into the new Joker. So the idea being that the Joker was an idea started by Jerome that passes on from one person to the next. Uh, and then even with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, director Todd Phillips says, quote, there's many ways to look at the movie. He might not be Joker. This is just a version of a Joker origin. So, again, playing around with the idea of maybe it's not just one guy. Maybe it's a whole legacy of different people throughout the years. Maybe Joker actually did accidentally stab himself at the end of Batman number one, and then a new Joker popped up in the next one to fight Batman and get left in the burning building, et cetera, et cetera. And, and this is more than one guy. But this is all. these are all the different hints and stuff over 80 years that people really wow. don't talk that much about it. But this is the Joker, and the potential ties to being supernatural. I want oh. Corpse Joker. That's all I want now. Yeah. Want corpse that old Joker. goofball. <laughs> yeah, fuck Ace Chemical. This is... <laughs> I don't know. I like this. I, I kind of like all, all of it. You know, or yeah. Vincent Price Golden Age Joker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Christopher yeah. Lee which, or whatever. Which Cesar Romero can kind of, in some way, be considered that. A little bit more swing in 60s, but he's kind of got that chain link between Ooh, them and turn, Vincent Price. Turn, turn that turn that dial a little bit and make him a little more evil. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and it kind of fits mm-hmm. in, yeah. Yeah, indeed. So let's uh, let's go around. In the beginning, we had Andrew voting for realism, Wolfie and Alex being open to supernatural, and then Eli and Stefan voting for realism. So same opinion as before or not? Let's actually go in reverse. So Stefan, has anything changed in terms of your opinion on the I joke? I mean, I am totally for the idea and like just inhabiting people's brains and causing them to just take over. I'm all for that. Sweet. It's cool as hell. All right. <laughs> Eli? Um, you know, I'm kind of with the idea that he's almost like a Pennywise type uh, character to where he's just this, he's more than just a man that he's been, he's an idea that manifests itself throughout time. I, so maybe he is supernatural. I don't know. He's actually a giant spider. <laughs> he is giant clown spider <laughs> all right alex i mean you yeah. already felt supernatural so i'm guessing you have you, you feel that even more strongly now oh it's the strangest thing i think he's a real guy now based with all the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's jack nicholson <laughs> 180 around i just like i was blind but now i see wait till they get a load of me <laughs> no yeah i uh I, I think there's a, a fun, you know, kind of supernatural element to where, you know, especially if you want to play kind of fast and loose with a cannon and be like, oh, you know, his blood is the essence. As long as his blood is freed from his body in some way, you know, it can affect some other person and keep him going. And maybe some consciousness of the previous adventures, lifetimes makes his way through. But, you know, sometimes the brain can't handle it. And so that's why you get some jokers that are more erratic than others, some that are more aware, mm-hmm. some that, you know, mm-hmm. Uh, feel things different, but I have to say my favorite Joker of all time would have to be. I read this in a cracked article years ago, but there was a Joker adventure where he tried to do a bank heist in like the 40s, I think, and he did it really bad. He 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 messed it up, and so they filmed it. And they're like the Joker, you know, messed up this bank uh, heist, <laughs> but back in the day they had a different term for it. <laughs> I know he's going this. That guy really pulled a boner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so spread across Gotham news as far as the eye could see. Uh, Joker's boner seen by all. <laughs> <laughs> I have and seen that. It's amazing. Spread that way. That's funny. That's funny. I for, I forgot one thing with the blood thing as well because our fans are going to kill me if I don't mention this. It, there is an alternate universe apparently where Batman and Joker are in a fight to the death and Joker dies but infects Batman with the blood and Batman starts going insane and becomes the Batman who laughs, who is the current villain in DC continuity. So that's mm-hmm. just another thing of another instance of his, his blood c- sort of creating a legacy in a way. Interesting. That's Multidimensional metal. even. Yeah, multi. Yeah, it's not just it's, in the main some universe. Weird shit going on here, in there. Yeah, exactly. Really <laughs> beyond the surface at this point. Into the Joker verse. Yes. <laughs> Who's making the Kool Aid? It's it's like gravity. Joker cult. Oh, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> he goes yeah. through the, the bookcase, but it's actually the case in the Batcave, and he's trying to talk to Robin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mean, uh, Interstellar, right? Yeah, what did I say? Interstellar. Yeah, gravity. gravity. <laughs> oh, 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 I see, I see. Because, yeah, like, <laughs> like, madness is like... I think I, think I watched those movies back to back the first time, and I was like, wow, that... So you're saying boy, Sandra Bullock that... is the Joker? <laughs> yeah. Matthew McConaughey's and George, Batman? And, and and George Clooney is the robot that walks all funny, like... <laughs> He's Bicentennial Man and that shit? So... <laughs> no, only one man is Bicentennial Man. You take that back. <laughs> It's very true. All right. Uh, Wolfie, obviously, you felt that there was room for this. So now you've heard even more of the evidence. Yeah. I think, you know, I had my own ideas about like the creepy clown through mythology, and, and, and you elaborated even more on that. I'm really grateful for this amount of information and that it's even out there about the Joker and all these different theories and stuff and all these different hints. 
it like in as much as you can explain or try to explain it in clever ways. There's still so much mystery behind this like laughing man, this pale laughing man character. And, and up until now I didn't know anything about goth Joker and now I'm in. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, you know, I think, yeah. And I think in a lot of ways there's, there's, there's some supernatural elements to, to like kind of along with what the other guys were saying, uh, mm-hmm. the different versions and how there's like either in my mind it's like a thread but even could be like tainted blood or the lineage passed on something genetic or something e- even more so than that something demonic or or godlike mm-hmm. fuck yeah yeah well, crafty and almost mm-hmm. yes dude yeah, right, I, yeah. I have a feeling we're living in that fucking universe <laughs> <laughs> arkham universe yes yeah. well that's where arkham uh, came uh, from as andrew uh, covered in our arkham Deep dive. The Arkham Asylum name comes from Lovecraft. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Batman's uh, drenched in it. Yep. Yeah. And how <laughs> right. here? I just want. I just want to say one thing too about how like how much Batman and these this particular universe just stands out for us. Maybe in like you know the last eighty years, probably. Um, I was watching Middle Ditch and Schwartz last night on Netflix. It's like a improvisational comedy specials that uh, Thomas Middle Ditch and Ben Schwartz do. Um, look them up if you're not familiar. But anyway, they had a whole thing where they referenced like Bat, uh, Bruce's origin and the pearls and Martha Wayne, Martha and Thomas Wayne and everything. And I was going to video it and send it to you guys, but it's just like there's something about the enduring legacy that I think goes beyond just the pop culture elements of Batman and this universe. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something very deeply rooted, even traced through the f- the 40s or whatever with the shadow or the 20s. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it's so interesting. Anyway, yeah probably why i'm on a podcast about it indeed yes <laughs> what? as if as if we're passionate enough to talk about it every week oh. all right andrew the skeptic you have i've laid out the evidence uh you have opened my eyes and mind <laughs> and heart benatavius maximus um so uh yeah i'd say it's interesting to see how this has kind of been like a low-key thing in dc in the DC universe since the beginning and they're kind yeah. of every yeah. generation of writers has kind of been sort of hinting at it and playing with it in the background a little bit here and there. So I think that really does show some evidence that they, that he might be this way. So, um, yeah, I don't, I, it still seems like maybe that wasn't the original intention, but it seems like that's kind of what they're going for now. And I wonder if he fucked Jonah Hex's wife. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he did. What? It Just is the Matrix. You vomit. I, w- <laughs> <laughs> I will say the 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 one the issue where he does die in the electric chair. That was written by Bill Finger, the okay. guy who created Batman mm, and the Joker yeah. and wrote the first Joker See, story. So that's how much is- of a hero Bill Finger was. He tried to end him. He tried to kill him. But then Bob Kane came back and he was like, nah, bring that funny son of a bitch back in here. Chomp on cigar, smoke, exactly. slap my secretary. That funny ass. son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that guy. And then Bob Kane's really like the king, you know, who the other guy wanted revenge against. Anyway, this has been the Superhouse Podcast. I will leave us with one final note on similar because Wolfie just reminded me uh, there was another Batman artist named Sheldon Maldoff, and he said this about Bob Kane: "quote Bob did have that long, lean face and that kind of a smile when he was much younger. I used I used to tell him he looked like the Joker." There's a metaphor uh, in there somewhere. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> perhaps Bob Kane was the real Joker the entire time. But, yeah. We started he, with. And he was the biggest loser of that tonight's episode. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. He's the biggest yeah. loser every time we do an episode. Yeah, he Imagine never him. gets a very fair shake around here. <laughs> he just leaves his shit everywhere and knocks things over. Smells like cigars. <laughs> Son of a gun. Well, we started with three for realism, two for supernatural, and we ended with all five being like, "Yeah, I can see it." So I think I've successfully turned everybody into the Is idea Joker a cryptid? of Joker. <laughs> He he's a new modern day god in our mythology. Yeah, nice. there we go. Like there we hey, go. And I, I th- like that. I was thinking is let me have ask one more question. Sorry, is Wendigo a cryptid, or is that a little too much in like, mm, like a mythology or something? Uh, that's a hard question to answer. Uh, because it's really divided 
on which way it goes. Depends on the person you ask, I guess. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, I, I do like the Wendigo. Well, the you know I don't like him, but the, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The lore the behind buddies. it is pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, that All was right. some excellent tutelage there, Ben. Yeah, um, thanks, thank Ben. Much. That was a lot of really interesting shit. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. And thank you for the Cryptid Campfire for joining us into this deep dive into the supernatural elements of somebody not usually considered to be supernatural. Of course. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks yeah, for thanks, having us. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Awesome. Learned, learned a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that, well, we're that glad. True. <laughs> How can they find you online, man? Well, uh, should we uh, do the little Cryptid Campfire spiel, Eli? Sure. Uh, you, uh, you lead us. All right. Lead us. So, uh, well, I'm Alex Daikaiju, and if you want to find me online, you can find me at Alex Daikaiju. That's Alex D A I K A I J U on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I post a lot of cryptid and uh, monster related art, so keep an eye peeled for some cool stuff. And um, if I wanted to, well, if I wanted to go out into a graveyard and dig under a tombstone and find a secret layer of Stefan Myers. I could do all that, but we're quarantined, so where could I find you online? I'll make it easy for you. you can find <laughs> Please. Me on Instagram at Myers Stefan. That's M-Y-E-R-S-S-T-E-F-F-E-N. And, uh, That's it. you know, when this quarantine is over, I'm excited to get on the dirigible fly <laughs> over the sky. <laughs> we have a fist of cuffs or two with a man in a bat costume. But for the time being, I want to know where I can find the Eli Watson. Uh, you can find me at the Eli Watson on Instagram. And you can follow Cryptid Campfire at Cryptid Campfire on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We even have our own official website, cryptidcampfire.com, where you can get your official Cryptid Campfire t-shirt. Ooh, and, except no substitute. Yeah. We've had bootlegs before. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. And uh, yeah, and uh, we also uh, we, we have the we have the website that he mentioned. We also have a Patreon where uh, if you want to hear more about cryptid stories and get early access to you know exclusive episodes about some urban legends from some tall tales for five dollars a month, you could do Cryptid Campfire at Patreon. And uh, yep. I think that's it for us. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Thunderwolf Drew on Twitter and Instagram. You can join the soup, the Shasta Army on patreoncom slash podcast. Uh, take out your phone and then open up your voice recorder app, and then record something like "Super Superhero Stuff You Should Know Was Awesome" or "I Fucking Love You Guys" or whatever, and share that to superhousepodcast at gmail.com, and then. We will use that file in our episodes at some point. You too can become a part of the podcast. And uh, I think that's it for me, Ben. You can find us on Instagram at SuperHousePod, as well as on Twitter, also at SuperHousePod. Big thanks to everybody who supports us over on our Instagram. Uh, So our shout-outs for this week are to DC Figures and Collectibles, They do a lot of cool shit with action figures and posing them in different scenes. Uh, Robin underscore 56, uh, WTF Amicom, uh, BEH underscore Shad, uh, Aaron Willett underscore Kingship left some nice comments for us along with Matches Home Alone Malone. So thank you very much, guys. As usual, uh, big thanks as well to not only Shasta, but also Matt Herring and Cookie Noms. (laughs) Over to Wolfie. I'm Wolfie Cruz on Instagram. Uh, I got a couple Facebook groups, the Overly Critical Hyper Analytical Movie Club, where we talk about movies and, you know, share our bold statements and honest opinions, Um, as well as a group called Heavy Rotation, where we talk about heavier music and share our love of metal and that kind of thing, darker music, Um, as well as the Superhouse Podcast group. Check those out on Facebook. Speaking of extracurriculars, I also got uh, Thunder Wolf Productions and Thun- look up Thunder Wolf Live or Thunder Wolf Lives on uh, on uh, YouTube, and there's a new Facebook group for that as well. And we're going to be, well, mainly I guess me, I'm going to be ramping some of that up a little bit more as my my uh, 
project stuff that I do outside of Superhouse. And there will be some crossover, but that's for the future. Anyway, this is Andrew signing off. This is Ben signing off. Wolfie signing off. All right, this is Stefan signing off. This is Eli signing off. And this is Alex signing off. (laughs) 